Ever notice how some songs just take you on a ride? Not just like a toe tapping kind of thing, but like a yeah. full on emotional roller coaster. Yeah, like the music just seems to connect on a deeper level. Totally. And that's exactly what we're diving into today with uh, Benson Boone's Beautiful Things. But we're going beyond just the lyrics. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to explore how the music itself makes those emotions hit so hard. Yeah. There's this whole concept called prosody in music. And basically, it's how the melody, the rhythm, even the structure of a song can actually reflect and amplify the lyrics. Okay, so how's that work in Beautiful Things? Well, let's think about the first verse. It starts off with this classic love song vibe, but there are these like little hints that something else is going on. Yeah, those kind of bent notes at the ends of some phrases, mm -hmm. almost like a musical question mark. Exactly. They're like little disturbances. Our first clue that things aren't as simple as they seem. Like that feeling you get when um, when you feel a chill in the air right before a storm hits. Oh, okay, I see. You know, something big is coming. Okay, so it's like the song is telling a story with the words and the music both. Exactly. And that brings us to the chorus where the storm we were talking about really breaks loose. It's like the ocean pulling back, you know, gathering its strength before a tsunami crashes down. Yes. It builds and builds and then, bam, this wave of emotion just hits you. And the way Boone uses his voice in that moment, it's so raw. Oh, yeah. It's so powerful. It actually reminds me of that raw, powerful vocal style that Justin Hawkins from The Darkness is known for. Yes, exactly. Those high, almost strained sounding vocals in the chorus, they're completely intentional. They add another layer to that feeling of paranoia and intensity that the lyrics are already building. It's like he's giving a voice to that feeling of just being completely overwhelmed by your own emotions. Like you're almost losing yourself in them. Yeah, it's like the music itself is getting swept away in that wave of emotion. And then we get to the second verse and things change a little bit. Yeah, the lyrics get way more introspective, yeah. you know? He's singing about wanting to hold on to these beautiful things, but there's also this fear there. Like he's almost afraid to let himself be happy. Yeah, it's that classic struggle, isn't it? Wanting to enjoy the good stuff without worrying about when it's going to end, but then the worry always creeps in. It really does. Yeah. Like it's hardwired into our brains to think about what could go wrong even when things are great. What do you think that is? Well, I think on some level it's a survival thing. You know, our ancestors who were always on the lookout for danger, those were the ones who survived. So even though we aren't dodging saber-toothed tigers anymore, our brains haven't really caught up yet. Yeah, pretty much. That negativity bias is like burned into our systems. But the cool thing is once we see it, once we realize it's there, we can start to work on it. You know, we yeah. can train ourselves to actually be present, to appreciate those beautiful things while we have them. That's a really good point. So we've got this tension building in the song, this fear of losing the good stuff. But then it goes somewhere totally unexpected. That ending gets me every time. It's so abrupt, right? Almost like a breath that gets cut off. You're in this emotional whirlwind one minute and then silence the next. It does. It's like he's coming up for air after being like pulled under by a wave. Yeah, and that's what's so interesting to me. What's that? It's like how fast those big, intense emotions can just disappear in our own lives too. Like they burn so bright and then poof, gone, just like that. It's kind of wild when you think about it. You're left with this echo of the feeling, but it's gone. Exactly. And isn't that crazy? How can something be so strong and then just vanish like that? Yeah, it really makes you think. So, like, stepping back from this for a sec, what's the takeaway here? How does this song, this whole prosody thing, connect to us? For me, it's like this reminder. It's okay to feel those big emotions, you know, even the scary ones. Right. Because just like that ending, they don't last forever. Don't be afraid to ride the wave, even if you think it might wipe you out. Exactly. Those intense moments like pure joy or heartbreak or even fear, they're all part of being human. And, you know, maybe if we embrace those ways, we can actually learn how to handle them better next time they come around. That's a really cool way to look at it. And then you know what else I thought of? What's that? This idea of music telling a story with emotions. It's everywhere once you start to listen for it, like the way a melody builds up or how a chord change can make your chest ache. It's all so carefully put together to make us feel a certain way. Yeah, you really start to appreciate the artistry behind it all, right? For sure. It's like musicians are sharing something truly special with us, you know, a way to connect with what we're feeling. And maybe we even learn something about ourselves because of it. So next time you listen to Beautiful Things, or really any song, pay attention to how the music is working with the words to tell the story. It might surprise you what you find. And don't be afraid to just let those beautiful things wash over you. Well said. Thanks for diving into this with me today. Until next time.